Well, good morning. Uh, I'm in uh, Stillwell, Oklahoma at uh, the farm of Harless Walters to talk about his cooker. Uh, would you, you call this a convection style cooker or with the tubes and everything? How, what would you call it exactly? It's a, it's a thermal siphon type of solar cooker. The tubes are full of oil and as the tube gets hot on the outside, that oil moves to the top here and this is the cooking area. So all your hot, hot oil goes to the top. The back side of the tube is letting the cool, cool oil go back down and it's completely circulating at all times. The hotter the oil gets, there's always hotter oil on the outside than there is on the back side. So it's a circulating, keeping the heat up to the top, sure. right under your cooking product. Sure, and uh, I can say I have one. Was it three <laughs> years ago or so? Yes. I pulled up here with a heavy duty trailer because I knew it was uh, it wasn't going to fit in my Saturn, <laughs> and uh, it works it works so well, and we will put uh, especially ribs or yeah. uh, pork roast, uh, anything where we want nice tenderized meat, you know, the slow, low heat. Uh, not quite 300, maybe 280, 290 on average, but once it gets there, it hangs there, and even with a cloud or two, it'll, it'll stay there the whole whole day. So, uh, and I uh, remember you recommending just point it toward noon because the, the pipes, are, there's enough distance and yeah. so forth, right? Well, the, the, the pipes are also round, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter if the sun comes in this way yep. or it comes in this way, uh, you don't have to track the sun. Sure. It automatically tracks the sun. You just put it in one position. Sure. And, of course, the, the cooker is environmental safe. You know, you can put your hand on it. Yep. And, and it's not exactly warmed up yet, but yep. it's early to warm up. But uh, children can play around it, birds can sit on it, sure. and it's enclosed, which I thought was a good idea because that way the, if you're cooking there's always a, a fly or a gnat or, sure. or something that wants to come around this way that they can't get to your food. Yep. Um, when I brought it home, I built a little base with mm -hmm. wheels on it so I could tuck it away when I have so many cookers in my collection. Mm -hmm. But I also built a little a little pantry underneath. Oh yeah. Because it's one of those things where when it's up there, it's like, oh, what else can I do with that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's all this. Uh, I've got all these uh, all this cookware that I keep bringing in from the outside and the inside from the kitchen. But why not just keep it outside? And mm -hmm. so that's what I did, which is one one great one advantage to this. And uh, I actually got what at least we call back in the day the farmer's jack, the old the nice big honking jack that. Uh, lift it up so I can put the platform underneath it all with my just myself and the jack. Mm -hmm. It's like having a second person. I have a, a small rail built of an angle arm with the two rollers. You can raise this up and slide it right under there and you can pick the back end up and roll it by yourself. Well sure, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fairly nice, you know, but I just feel one for me to use. I used to take these out and demonstrate them in different areas, but the price to build it uh, at that time was too much too much money uh, considering the cost of energy was less then yep. but now the cost of energy is going up so the unit is a, a little more uh, advantage to have one of them sure. and it's a, it's a this is a 2008 model oh. uh, so it's it's seen a little bit of weather oh, four, but 14 years though yeah it's that's 14 like years ago that's like a, yeah I mean, uh, yeah. The glass has got a little bit of uh, breakage uh, where it come unsealed, but yeah. that's no problem. You can pop that off and pop that off and slide the glass out and reseal it and put it back in. Sure, so, sure. Uh, you know, it, it needs to be done. I haven't done it yet, but it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. and so this is the first model that I built. It has a vent and a fill tube up there at the top. Sure. And uh, a fill tube on that side. Uh, you can't fill it completely all the way full. You've got to fill it up even where this is because the expansion of the oil, oh, yeah. it's got two and a half gallon in it. So two and a half gallon of oil will expand quite a bit. And sure. so I've got expansion tubes up the top to keep it from overflowing. Sure. And it's mineral oil. It's a food grade mineral oil that's in there. So it's, the oil is no harm for, for your food or anything like that. Sure. Mineral oil is, 
and it won't hurt you. Yeah. You know, we had to take some of that when we were younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when uh, when did you uh, come up with the idea, or how far back does it go when you learned about solar energy or decided to I've put it to use? I've been working with solar energy for probably 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I built first, I built a box. And I could get 300 degrees in the box, something sure. like this. But I didn't quite understand uh, all I need to know about solar energy. I, I built a box, you can get 300 degrees in it, so I set a pan of potatoes in there, and I thought, well, I'll cook my potatoes. At the end of the day, even though it was 300 degrees in there, the, potato, the water in the pan was still cool because uh, air is an insulator rather than a conductor. So the good Lord's smart enough to figure out if I bring cold air in and warm air in, I'll make, a, make it sweat. So that's all my pan done was sweat it on the outside and the inside stayed there. So therefore I had to go back and redesign and put the oil underneath the product, just like a regular uh, uh, oven, I mean, or cooktop, you know. Sure. If you put the heat underneath it, you get it hot. So that was my yeah. idea. I built another unit uh, prior to this for mostly heat and water. Mm -hmm. And I heated water from a hot water tanks and things for the house. Sure. And But that's not not real efficient. It's saving about $30 a month. Okay. You know, it's out there now, it's on the internet, and, sure. and no one can build it for 50 years uh, okay. other than myself. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, and uh, I can attest to the, I mean, this is solid, rock solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's the, uh, see, 16 gauge galvanized metal. Well, sure, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. on the outside, bent, framed up and everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then this the storm window? Yeah, that's sure. a patio door glass. Mm -hmm. uh, just a regular sure. patio door glass. It's a, a double pane. Oh, double pane. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, double pane will give you 250 to 300 degrees. Sure. Single pane will give you 150 because you don't uh, have the air gap in between. The air gap is where you it's just between here, somewhere around half inch in between there. That keeps this this cool in the inside hot. Sure. And so the air is your best uh, insulator that you've got for heat transfer. Sure. And so that's that's the purpose of this. And you don't get the kind of condensation that you get with a single pane. No. I've seen that no. from the yeah. ones that I've built. Yeah. Yeah, single pane. And like I say, the air gap here will give you twice the, almost, well, almost twice the amount of heat. Mm -hmm. 150, 250, 300. And I goofed up a little bit on this this design here. I let the tube go down a little bit too much, and I, and I bent them. And they're a little too low. You need to bring okay. them up. You need to bring these up another inch or inch and a half towards your glass. Okay. Coppers went up a little bit, quite a bit, and so the expense of building one of them right now is a little higher. But they're saying everything's going to be coming down. Sure. I've got two more to build. Yep. And but uh, I want to wait just a little while to build and count the price sure. of the copper. Yeah. Yeah. It takes. There's 29 tubes in there. This particular one has an extra tube coming down in the back side here mm -hmm. and feeding back in through this a manifold oh, sure. that, I, that I put in here. And the good part about a manifold is, in case one one tube is moving a little faster than the other. It'll all balance out mm -hmm. and go up there together. Sure. So, yeah. if you keep it level, now if yep. you get it a little le unlevel, well then one side will get hotter than the other. Yeah. yeah. On the high side. Sure. That, uh, I've got a else? larger unit, but I'm not got it working yet. <laughs> but uh, it's <laughs> it was going to heat my house, but I moved the unit too far away from the house. Ah. Uh, okay. The time you transfer the oil through the ground, uh, up to the house, you know, uh, I lose. I lose a third of it on okay. that way, so it should have been, I should have put it on the roof of the house, oh, put okay. it with this type of tubing, sure. and it would, that way we'd have had 250 degrees uh, mostly running, and if you, the design of this here with a manifold, if you feed it here with maybe say a 3 8 line, and all these tubes here, that would make the the fluid goes slower and therefore it get hotter if you want to use it for your house. Sure. And uh, that way, put maybe a 3 8 line in 
And I used a power steering pump off of a car. And it's simple. And, sure. uh, and your control factor was a top element of a hot water tank. Mm -hmm. And then put it inside the unit out there. As soon as you set the top element any degree that you want, from 90 up to 125. And I set it at 125. And therefore, as soon as the unit got at 125 degrees, it turned one side of a relay on. Sure. And then if I needed it inside the house, well then the other thermostat would turn the other side on to make the 220 relay and then drop it in and it start working. Sure. So the thermostat and the, the outside temperature controlled whether it was on or off. Sure. So it was simple. Yeah, for controlling temperature you're able to do that. With the, is that a, that's a, like a thermocoupler thing that uh, measures the temperature? Or? No, uh, uh, there's the top element of it. Hot water tank has got a click sound. Oh, okay, sure. The click sound says it hits whatever temperature you've got it set at. It turns the on a hot water tank. That will turn the the bottom tank on. And when it whenever it gets so hot in there, and the water temperature reaches whatever you got set at 130, 125, sure. and it cuts cuts your hot, the electric off. And the same thing was doing on the, the other cooker right there. You just I went out of the heater. And it would work real good. And I've been playing around with the idea of uh, making an air conditioner. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, the purpose of the air conditioner, all the campers and things usually have a little propane heater that keeps your ice and refrigerator cool. So you've got enough temperature by using propane. Propane will evaporate at a lower temperature. And what's uh, uh, this other stuff? With. So if you use propane inside the inside the unit, yeah, I know people say, well, that's a bad deal. This house has really been on propane for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, the refrigerator in there one time went out, not out of it, and so I called and they wanted 247 dollars, I believe, it was to come out and get it up. And so I said, well, I'll put the propane in. So I. Took a little five gallon bottle of propane, probably cost me two dollars, maybe fill it propane unit. And that way I could smell where the little leak was, and I found out where the leak was, tightened the leak up, and I had no more trouble with it. Sure. Propane will get you uh, use as a refrigerant will be five to ten degrees cooler than regular grill. I had never heard of that before. Is that is that common or is that just a... Uh... It works real good on the house unit because propane, when it gets hot, will give it and raise the temperature up to about 300. But a house sometimes runs from 300 to 500 degrees pressure, so it don't hurt a house. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah. So, so pr pressure, uh, not degrees. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah okay. pressure. Yeah, the pressure, uh, you know, is where the propane will, when it warms up, it'll, get, it'll raise up about 300 degrees. Sure. Uh, pounds pressure, and but a house unit works real good at that. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, it's more environmental safe. Propane goes to the ground rather than goes to the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and so therefore it's more environmental. Uh, than I don't know why they don't, other than the fire hazard uh, sure. propane, but you do you don't put that much propane in it. Yeah. It would just it had an open there, it would just be gone just real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I thought. It would be real good if you're in an area, you got enough room up there to put a couple of gallons of water. Sure. You know, you could boil your water per day. Yeah. You know, two gallons will last you a little while for drinking and everything. So it has more advantages than a person. If you really get back and look at it, you can cook one, say, ribs or something one, to one day, and then the next day you can cook whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I put beans on it. Uh, just regular brown sure. beans and everything. So you can bake baked potato. It takes it all day to prove a baked potato. But mm -hmm. the good advantage of the oil in there, like you said, if it gets a little cloudy, the oil is hot. It takes about an hour, or hour and a half yep. for the oil to cool down. So therefore, it's still heating. Yep. It's a day like today where, well, well right now. Yeah, it's looks clean. like you run out of clouds. Yeah, that's it ran a good out thing. <laughs> I've got some. I've got some ribs in there. I'm gonna put in sure. the ribs. It's yeah. about up to about 150 degrees. Yeah. And side by side, you know, ribs or, or yeah. roast. 
stew, roast beef, and then, uh, and then vegetables, and, you know, beans. Uh, Joe's family grew up in Latin America, missionaries. Mm -hmm. And so rice and beans, rice and oh, beans. Yeah. And yeah, so we'll put them in side by side. And mm -hmm. dogs, and, uh, you can't go wrong. Now, yeah. uh, the good part of this also, if you have to work, you can put your product in it this yeah. morning, and when you get home with evening, it'll stay hot till yes. oh, about, well, today it'll be hot seven or eight o'clock at night. Yeah. So by five o'clock or six, where well, you've got a good hot meal already. There. Sure. It's in so. volume enough for a, a good sized oh, yeah. family. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is just more so a unit that was built for an individual family, not not commercial. Yeah. You know, but a person can make commercial ads, you can put them sure. two or three side to side and do the same thing. Yeah. But this is big enough that one person can move it, uh, you know, if you need to move it. Sure. Well, how about we uh, look at the back? So tell us how it works from the back. Well, this is just a simple latch, but I made it where the children couldn't open it up. You've got to have a little bit of, and just raise it up and get it out of the way. So, and it opens up here, and you can you can feel it's hot. Oh, yeah, it's it. already starting to Yeah, it's working. Yep. And this is a big enough area. It's about 12 inches here, mm -hmm. but I put 18 pound turkey in here and cooked in. So, and these these little things here is for protection of your tubes. Oh, uh, sure, yep. Yeah, put them on there so that the tubes are fairly thin and you wouldn't want to knock a hole in them, so yep. put that on there. And so that's that's for protection of the tubes. Yep. Like I say, this thing is 22 years old or, yeah. or 24 years old. Yeah. So it's, and then if you have got insulation in here, mm -hmm. uh, this is not quite as much as on the side. There's three inches on each side. Okay. But this is not quite three inches here. Mm -hmm. But you have metal and you got some, you got some more air space in here. Sure. So it bounces three inches. And what's and the insulation? Fiberglass or? No, it's a, it's a hardboard with fiber. Okay. Uh, printed edge, but you can't use anything bubble wrap or anything like that, it melt it burns yeah. up. Yeah. So you have to you have to use the insulation then to put metal metal between the insulation so that saves there's a little bit of air gap in there so you don't burn the insulation. Sure. So okay. that's that's the way you load it. Uh, yeah. it's it's easy, simple, you know, but uh, that's nobody can get in there yeah, really. I like that. Yeah. And it's just to push it over. Yeah. It takes a little bit of pressure to push it over. Yeah. But it's a safety factor to keep the children from getting in. If this is open, then it's hot enough that sure. it could, could burn it. Yep. Uh, you built mine with something that's a different latch, yes, but it's, a, a it's, latch. it's equally, yeah. kid will have to work a long yeah. time to figure it out. Yeah. I remember when I was five years old, I would have figured it out eventually. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, uh, that's trying, to, trying to look at everything it's in case it was in a family or that it wouldn't cause any harm for anybody. Yes. Some people said they would like to have uh, a unit outside, you know, where you drain it out, uh, drain it and clean it from the outside. But if you drain it, uh, the hot oil in there, or if you have anything sticking out, he's transferred through metal real easy. Yeah. He don't transfer through fiberglass or, right. or ins yeah. insulation. Yeah. When uh, everyone I've interviewed where they've designed cookers, uh, eventually they say, well, the mistake I made was you've got to get it from the glass in the front or the mm -hmm. opening in the front and they really would have tried to do it from the back and the ones that are really celebrating are the ones that said this is the way to go yeah there's uh, one in california and one in uh, tucson where they built a box cooker really good sized box cooker stainless steel and then the, the big balloon reflectors on frames and on a post you know it'd take a hurricane force wind to blow it over it's stuck in the ground and, and, uh, and they've got that thing in the back because they just don't want it. It's too, I mean, you got to reach over the reflectors for one thing, yeah. and so this is just the simplicity itself. Yeah, this is this is simple and easy, easy to get into, and you're not messing with the heat there. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a little bit of heat in there, but if you're careful, and everything, the tube and everything is back far enough that you won't burn your hand. Yep. See, they're they're back far enough. Oh, you, sure. Yep. You can get in there and load your product. Yep. Whatever you're gonna put in there. Yep. So. But you might keep in mind that you need uh, about the same amount of surface area there as what you got in the uh, oven up here. Okay. 
same, same amount and one to one. This is one to one. Sure. The, the heating part down there, time it turns in, you lose your temperature there, but the amount of uh, heat there is the same amount of heat area you got up okay. here. It's a one to one ratio. Okay, sure. So, yeah. if you had two to one, it might get a little hotter, but yeah. you know, one to one, if you loaded too heavy a product, well then, uh, time it heats your product up there, everything, well then you might take a little longer. Yeah. But if you just put a small set of ribs in there, it doesn't affect the heat. Sure. But if you had, and the, another good part about this, you can use any kind of a, uh, cooking utensil that you want to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have black, you can use glass, yeah. uh, pan, or anything. Sure. So You've already got the, the heat absorption with yeah. black pipes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And any kind of glass uh, works in this. Yeah. You don't have to have any extra utensils. Uh, you can take it right out of your kitchen, put it in here, cook it, put it back in the kitchen, you know. Sure. So that's another good part about it. Yeah. It's not required to have a, a special cookware. Yeah. When there are a uh, uh, few people, including myself, who tried to come up with a uh, through the what they call the through the wall oven, mm -hmm. and this could this could possibly work if it were you know you yes. could fit it into a, as long as a, we try to say the equator facing window, so mm -hmm. we include the southern hemisphere because that was they need the north facing window. <laughs> I, wall. I thought about this for a while, <laughs> yeah. but if you'll notice, the sun's almost overhead during the yes. summertime. It even gets back up this way, yeah. so therefore putting it in inside the house other than transferring the heat. Now you could transfer the heat uh, through a, from a small pump. Mm -hmm. Then you can put the unit in the inside the house. Okay. You know, yeah. you could do that. But you'd have to move the fluid in. Right. Or make it a longer area. Sure. Your heating surface has to be out further away from your house because the edge of your yeah. house will cover in the summertime, you'll have just half your unit. Yep. Just half your unit. And now in the wintertime it worked real good. Because the sun's around here lower sure. on the equator, you know. Yeah, so it's, it's almost equal. It almost doesn't matter what time of year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this and here, like the West Bill, it doesn't matter whether it's getting down this way or coming in this way. It'll actually get a little hotter in spring and fall mm -hmm. than it will in summer and winter. Sure. Because it's, uh, winter's all right, but your daylight, your daylight time is not uh, do cooking. But this unit, in Oklahoma, they say you can't solar cook in Oklahoma. It don't matter whether you're in Oklahoma, or Texas, or New Mexico, or wherever you know, or, or up north. This unit will work any place. I'm in Minnesota, Minneapolis. Yeah. I don't know what latitude you are, 30 something? We're 45 degrees, or right mm -hmm. halfway to the, yeah. to the North Pole from the equator. Yeah. And we do just fine with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So that's the that's advantage of this unit, uh, I think. Yep. It, it can use, be used any place in the United States. Yes. Or if you was in the other countries, it could be used there. Yeah. You know, this, I've seen them pack sticks and things like that to cook with. This unit right here would cook for a family. They spend the time cooking. But as the energy crisis gets more, well then there will be more advantage. It's that breaking point where people realize that. Yeah. Now you could make the unit longer that yeah. way and then this unit longer here and come in, sure. it'd be all right. Yeah, just put it in the flower box on top. Yeah, 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 yeah. put a picture up there or something. Multi-use, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is great. Yeah, I can't think of any, oh, one other question, it's just as, uh, as you say, and I find this in Minnesota too, just generating interest in alternative energies and especially solar cooking. I call it a niche of a niche of a niche mm -hmm. of you know, environmental uh, tool, you know? Uh, so you're not having a lot of uh, expression of interest around here, or? No, not really. I haven't. I could advertise it and things like that, but I'm kind of retired, you know. And, uh, and it takes a couple of weeks to build one of these things. Sure. Uh, it doesn't look like it would be, but. Uh, oh, believe me, I just took classes in welding, and even if I knew I could get really good at it. I know it would. This is a lot of work. Yes. This is, a, this is it's worth every penny of what you what you put into it. Every uh, minute you put into it. Yeah. The the brazing, uh, the tubes. Uh, most most any plumber could uh, sort of your tubes together for you. You know, but you know you still got the fact that you got to drill holes in it. Uh, and there are five eighths tubing on the OD, so a five eighths drill would work just fine by setting it up and drilling them. 
it's, it's a little fun to build, but yeah. you know, it doesn't take too long. The building of the tube is probably the simplest and easiest part to build. Sure. And so, but copper tubing is uh, the thinner the wall, the better it'll heat. Yep. The thicker the wall, well, then it'll still do the same, but it'll be a little slower. Sure. So, is this uh, this copper tube? Is it just what people ever use on average for their water? Yeah, pipes? yeah, okay. it's hot water. Yep. There are two different sizes. One's a little heavier than the other. Mm -hmm. I use the, the thinner because yep. uh, it is the heat's got to be transferred into the yep. oil, and that's all the all the tubing is for just transfer in. You got painted on the uh, painted on the outside and oil on the inside. It'll never yep. deteriorate. It'll last for years. Yep. Like I say, this is 24 year old and hadn't had any problem with it. Yeah. I could paint it again, but it does good just as well without it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, and of course, the, the trend, maybe you know this, you know, when you build condos in the city, is they leave the exposed girders with the rust on them. Uh -huh. or, they, or, they, or they paint them to look like rust. Yeah. Because it's kind of, it's kind of look classic. Well, this is, <laughs> this is galvanized underneath. I, I yep. put some paint on the outside, but this is actually galvanized sure. there. It just peeled off. You paint it, it'll peel off. Sure. But, I painted a couple of different colors. Sometime I put a green green on it one time. They wanted to do a Earth Day on it. Want to know if I could oh, sure. yeah. So I did take it over for Earth Day and a couple of things. And I said, well, it looked better than the green, so I painted it green. See a little bit of green up here. Yeah, a little bit of green. It's a, and it's a kind of a John Deere green. Yeah, it's John right? Deere green. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, I've been this one a little better. This particular unit I built for this this folds. These is actually oh. you could fold this and lay this lag down. Sure. I could put it in the back of the truck. But once uh, I built for you, uh, I took the lags to be removed. Yep. That's all right. Also, this is will lay down, and you can put that in in the truck, and with the roller and in the trace it in the roll it down. So it's easy, easy portable for me. We, uh, would you uh, be okay with me putting your email on the uh, yeah. post You can, you can. Hey, if somebody wants to talk to me about it, discuss it, and if they want to look at the the drawing in the way it's made, well then uh, Walter Solar Cooker has got the full breakdown, the pictures and everything sure. on the internet. Great, great. So you can look that up at any time you want to. Sure. And of course, my name is on the internet too. If you want to look sure. me up, well, I'm, yeah. I'm on there too. Once it's there, you're yeah. there forever. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. uh, got my phone number and addresses and everything on there. So uh, nobody can come out here where I'm at because they can't leave without me seeing them. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else will know. If yeah. Tried, if yeah. The neighbors got a neighborhood watch around here. You know, yes. uh, if it's a strange car, everybody wants to know who it is. Yes. So. Okay, well thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming down.